I've got a little Godot project from a past screencast episode where there's a player and they have a health bar. Press the space bar and their health decreases. In the scene tree, you'll see I've got a main node, which is a node 2D. I've got a color rect, rect, color rect which is a background color. I've got an icon, the health label, and the health bar. What I want to do is take the icon, health label, and health bar and make them into their own scene. Because you can compose your Godot scenes with instances of other scenes. And that's how objects, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, are sort of created and used and managed in Godot. So you'll create a scene and then you'll instantiate them. And then you can actually go into your scene of your object and change it and edit it accordingly. It's a little different at first, but you get used to it and it feels pretty intuitive. So we're gonna start by, we'll add a node 2D to wrap our player in. So now we have this new empty node. We're gonna go ahead and select these three with shift and I'm just clicking them. And you drag them into their new parent node. And we'll call this player. And then we have a script here that handles all of the functionality for the player. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna detach it from the main node of our game. And instead we're going to attach it from here. So, and I wanna rename this actually. So what we'll do is we'll, down here, we'll rename the script to be player.gd. And we'll just, since our player wrapping node as a node to do that can stay the same and then we'll associate our script existing script here by clicking and selecting open and then load so let's quick run our game make sure we didn't break anything everything's still functioning now what we'll do is you can right click on any node and you can say save branch as seen and we'll call it player and we'll save it and then you see how that ui changed now we have an ins we see it's an instance of player of type node 2D. There's a little movie clapper. So you can open it in the editor and you can open the script right from here too. Now, if we save this and look at the 2D scene, nothing's changed. We rerun it, everything works just as it did. But you'll see down here our player scene, we can actually open it in its own tab up here. Which you can also click by clicking the movie clacker, clapper. And now we have our own scene with the player. And there's a little oddities that we want to have to change. Before we were dragging around our player in the space of the screen when they were just their own nodes. But what we want to do actually is make player center in its own scene. And this helps because when we instantiate instances of it, we can then move it around accordingly while still having its origin centered. That's like the one little weird gotcha is like when you cr save a branch as its own scene, you want to recenter it so that, see this little plus icon? That represents the origin of the sprite and that helps determine its global position. And we want to be able to change the player's position, which we'll do very shortly. But now that we've centered player here, and you can even run this scene on its own. It's not super useful because it's over here, <laughs> way off the camera view. So you could grab all this, grab the origin, and I don't know if this will work. Um, so that just ran the whole game. Now we run that scene, now we can see it. Let's move player, I'm just curious if we, Put the player here, run the whole game. Yep, that, uh, that works. So you can, when you're like editing the scene for the player, as long as you move everything, including the centerpiece to its new location, it shouldn't affect it in the scenes that instantiate the scene. So that can help you with play testing and stuff. But uh, you gotta make sure that you move everything, including the center gear. Otherwise, the uh, position will be kind of messed up. <clears throat> but as long as it doesn't 
move it here, that's important. See, if we selected this and moved it, shifted it right, you see it shifts it within the instance of the player scene, which we don't want. We want it to all be together. And now we can preview it on our own outside of the context of our game, and we can preview it in our game. So you could compose a bunch of them. Now, we can even delete this node and instantiate a new instance of player. You can come down here to player TSCN and you can drag it in and change it accordingly. So that's an option, you can drag it in. We'll delete it, there's another way to do it. Let's see if it comes up here. I think it's maybe instantiate child scene. So yeah, if you click the gear, the link icon there, you can select a scene and instantiate it. So now we've got our player and it's centered and um, everything's good there. Now we can edit our player and we can say something like, you know, in funk process, um, if input dot action is action pressed we'll just do ui left for the left arrow key then we'll say position dot x minus equals one run our whole game if i press the left arrow key see our whole player now moves left and we can even we'll just make it move left and right just add that really quick We'll add that there. We'll make it just ever so faster. <clears throat> that should be a variable, but for this demo, it's okay. So now we can move left and right accordingly in our game scene. Here in player, if we go and just run our player scene, like imagine you had a game where there's a whole bunch of things going on, but you just wanted to test and get your player movement working well. That's when you would run just the scene of your player. Then you could go back in and test it in the game and see how it feels. So by breaking your game up into a bunch of scenes that you instantiate instances of and compose together, you're able to test your scenes that you've created in isolation and then see how they function within the game. This becomes really powerful as you're building and refining your game and um, working pretty quickly. So just to recap, you can right click on any node in a scene and save branches scene you can drag the scene in like we could have two players and run it and now if we press left and right both scripts are executing on the player so um maybe you'd want to assign settings and <clears throat> that sort of thing um i guess while we're in here we might as well talk about um a couple things to to help surface some interesting parts. So um, before we wrap up, remember how I said this should be a variable? Well, let's make it a variable. Let's have it be speed. And we'll say bar speed is equal to two like we had it. And that feels, it's not working. So let's see what's wrong. Okay, we have an issue there. I didn't type it in. Okay, now we've got a moving and two is there. We can actually do export var speed two. And then while the game's running, in the inspector, if you click a player, you can change that instance's speed. So instead we'll make the first player move at five and the other move at two. And you see they move at different rates because each instance has their variable value for speed set to a different one. If we make this one one, it'll move even slower. If we make it 20, it moves way faster. So that's a quick like additional tip is that if you have a variable, a value that varies, you can do export var and change it accordingly. And you can also then in the code, like if we have main GD here and we have ready, you can set those values in your code too. You don't just have to do it in the inspector. And so like, let's set player two speed to two there, but here on ready, we'll just say player two dot speed is equal to five. Run our game. And now you can see it matches the five that we set for player one in the inspector. Now I changed, now player one on the left is moving faster. 
So you can change these variables that you create in your instances with code elsewhere. It just becomes really, really useful. And um, yeah, so that's the basics in an isolated example of how to compose your game of scenes. And I think you'll see in examples where you're building a full game and tutorials is that this pattern's used a lot, but it can be helpful to just see it in isolation and explain further. Hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.